I don't really have a clever opening here. Let's just get to the article. A few weeks ago, there was a shooting at my apartment in building. A total of five shots were fired, resulting in, thankfully, zero injuries. I was home when it happened, but live on the third floor, away from the shooter's target. The kids downstairs who hang out in the hallway pretty much every day, drinking, smoking, talking sh and selling weed, had some of their beef meet them at home. That night, I remember hearing one of them scream, They should shove me, bro! Though it seems as it was probably the shock of the gunshot that's close to the shattering of glass from the building's front door, that made them believe he was hit. It was frightening. Wow, that sounds really traumatic. I'm glad you and the others weren't hurt. However, more frightening than that is the fact that in nearly every night since the shooting there has been either a police car parked across the street with its lights flashing, or two cops posted outside the night building, right at the steps standing guard. What? This is supposed to be the measure that prevents further violence, but the presence of the police scares me more than the kids selling drugs or the gunshots ever did. Is... is that a joke? You're seriously trying to tell me that you're less scared of those five gunshots that you heard going into your apartment than you are of the police? who are just standing there. He's just standing there... menacingly! One day, while walking into my building, avoiding all eye contact with the two officers, I heard one of them say the other one of the two of the vehicle, as I put my keys in the front door. Now the vehicle is when the police enter the building and go from top to bottom, scoping the place out for any potential criminal activity. I remember that these are the circumstances under which a Kai Gurley was killed. So after doing some research into this case, I found that Kai Gurley was a man who was killed by a rookie police officer after an alleged discharge of his gun that ricocheted off a wall and struck a Kai in the chest. So in this case, I would probably say that the cop made a mistake, but it's not a simple case of officer out to shoot innocent black person for no reason whatsoever. Another night, I was walking to the bodega to buy some ice cream, and as soon as I hit the bottom of the steps, still meaning to walk down the hallway to get to the front door, the officer's eyes were fixed on me, and they didn't run up until I was blocks away. I feel incredibly lucky, especially days later when video was surfaced of Walter Scott being shot in the back as he ran away from Officer Michael Slager in South Carolina. Another night, I was walking to the bodega to buy some ice cream, and as soon as I hit the bottom of the steps, still meaning to walk down the hallway to get to the front door, the officer's eyes were fixed on me, and they didn't run up until I was blocks away. So, to their credit, they managed to list two cases where the shooting was unjustified. But regardless, these two incidents don't explain your paranoia towards two people who haven't given you any reason to fear them. There's evidence to suggest that ISIS includes Muslim women, but I don't fear for my life every time I see someone wearing a hijab. Why are you so paranoid of these officers? Do you honestly think that one is just going to randomly shoot you for no reason? What would they have to gain from that? They'd be charged with murder and sent to jail. And even if they somehow did manage to get away with it, all they'd accomplish is shooting someone for no reason. Even if they were racist, that's a pretty piss poor risk versus reward factor. That's it, right? That's what the movement was about? This is what a justice looks like, correct? We were in the mistakes from the Darren Wilson and killing Michael Brown. Come Unfortunately, you guys didn't learn from the mistakes of Michael Brown. Officer Wilson was totally justified in shooting him because Brown tried to grab his gun and then charged at him. The only mistakes made were the media refusing to wait until the facts came out and building up the hands up don't shoot lie. As well as Black Lives Matter refusing to let it go when it turned out that the shooting was justified. And then you'll to Eric Garner, yeah? We're going to start holding the police to get As for Eric Garner, again, it's not a simple straightforward case. It was definitely a case of police brutality, the officer was using excessive force against him. However, it was more manslaughter than murder. While the chokehold was what did him in, his obesity and poor health contributed, so it's likely that the officer had no intention of actually killing him. So while I do think that it was a case of police brutality, I highly doubt that the police officer was racist. I said this before, there is no justice for the dead of black people. I'll continue saying it, because if it was satisfied with charges and the potential prison time, we would miss the entire point of Black Lives Matter. This isn't about getting better police, wanting to exercise its discretion in using force, but getting away from needing police altogether. Uh-huh. And how do you plan on doing that exactly? This article started off with some thugs firing bullets into your apartment building because they were beefing with one of the random kids over God knows what. Without the police, what's stopping them from simply entering the building and shooting the guy they're beefing with? Heck, when those policemen stop guarding the building, what's stopping them from performing another shooting? If they know there's no police, they know there's not going to be anyone to arrest them when they try to carry out revenge on someone. We don't consider the abolition of the 
the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the the even if the cops don't stop those guys from shooting at you eventually, the fact that people know about the police is incentive for them to not do things like that. Because if they had gone in and shot the guy they were beefing with, someone could have gotten a look at them and reported them. But without the police, there's no one left to report them to. Not this again. While it is possible that some people might be stupid enough to need to be taught about consent, this notion that classes that teach people not to rape will somehow eliminate rape entirely is nothing more than idealist nonsense. If it was that simple, then we would also teach people not to murder or steal. The decriminalization of drugs and the registration of the stigma around drug abuse, affordable and adequate housing, eliminating homophobia and transphobia, the things that actually reduce the amount of violence we witness, I don't want to hear about how necessary the police are. They are only necessary because we are all too willing to hide behind our cowardice, and not actually put forth the effort to create a better world. It's too much extreme. And pretty much everything else mentioned here boils down to create a perfect world, then we won't need police. Yeah, if we lived in a utopia, there wouldn't be a need for police. Makes you wonder why no nation in the entire world has ever simply created a utopia, doesn't it? When the city abolishes the police, and usually at this level we have a better sort of place to work, my answer is always both social, economic, and political equality. But that's not what's actually being asked. What the people mean is, who is going to protect us? Who will protect us? No. If you're white and well off, perhaps the police protect you. The rest of us, not so much. What I used to do, I have for an institution that routinely kills the people who look like me and make it so I'm afraid to walk out of my home. So just to sum this whole article up, people firing bullets into your home? It's pretty scary, but nowhere near as scary as two guys in uniform standing outside your building. Menacingly! Being scared of something doesn't automatically make your fear legitimate. Throughout this article, you've given no sensible reason to be scared of these officers. The most threatening either one has done is stare at you. The fact that you're more scared of them than you are of the people that actually open fire at your apartment building really speaks to how deluded you are. Never mind black on black crime, police don't even kill people comparable to traffic related deaths. And lastly, just because there have been people that have been killed by police that look like you doesn't mean they were killed because they look like you. Most police shootings are justified, it's just that whenever a black person is killed by police, it's made out as if the only reason in the world they could possibly be killed was because they were black. It doesn't matter if they were pointing a gun at the officer, holding a gun and refusing to drop it after being told to multiple times, holding a knife after being told to drop it multiple times, or charging at the officer. If they're black, it's automatically racism. And if a white person is shot by police, we won't hear about it. But it's assumed it was either justified or the officer was fired. That's all I really have to say on this stupidity. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.